Hey guys, I'm working on this PG502 that I picked up off of eBay to do some O-scope uh, calibrating and stuff. And it had a broken pot in it. Uh, you may recognize this from the other video on how to clean these. I took a break from cleaning this, or should say getting started to clean it, in order to uh, fix my pot here. The shaft was broken right here. So some of you guys know that I have a lathe from some of the other videos I've done. And I went ahead and I built one on it to replace this one. This one's actually brass, and this one's made out of stainless steel. But what I figured I would do is uh, feed it through the, the actual uh, the little support piece in there. That's, that's the, uh, the kind of brownish and O-ring thing there. And this goes on the back side, and then crimp that over. And if it doesn't crimp real good, then because this is brass, it'll, uh, it'll take solder. So that should really help. So I may just do both solder and like some epoxy on it to get it to work good. And for you guys that are interested to have a similar boat that may have a, a lathe or something or something you can use to build one, here's all your measurements and things for that uh, particular item. And I'll let it let you know how it works out. My only real issue is I'm missing a snap ring right here. Uh, let me see if I can't get it out and show it to you. All right, I've got it out here. Uh, this is what I'm missing here. These pieces, this one goes uh, right here. The washer goes next to it, and then the, in the bigger groove, let's see if I can't focus in there. The bigger groove right here is where the rubber goes. And that rubber is to make sure that this shaft doesn't turn while you turn the, uh, the inner shaft right here, which actually goes through it. This is a, a double ganged up pot, and maybe I can show you a picture of that in the inset or you know pause this video and I'll put a little picture in it and do some talking and then come back to this so uh, anyways so on this outside right here uh, I'm missing one of these that goes out here and what that does is it keeps it from going backwards so I don't know how I'm going to solve that issue just yet I may just get me a brass washer and put it on there and then since this is uh, brass maybe I'll drop a couple drops of solder on it or I or I do work in a shop that has electronics and we have a lot of a lot of junk stuff like this lying around either in pieces or just spare parts that have been removed from equipment so I may be able to find one of those in that so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to assemble this and I'll show you what it looks like all right this is where it goes through right here and then this piece down here in front of the file it goes on top of that with the tab pointing away from the disc and that's actually the stop uh, for for it so as it turns around it hits a little bump in the case and it stops it so let me get that on there and I'll show that to you alright here it is that's how it goes on and then these little tabs bend over or they can be uh, soldered or glued or something like that and then this uh, part right here the little tab sitting right there that goes as you turn it around it hits that bump right there so anyway so let me see if I can't fix this on there somehow so it stays on alright guys I went ahead and uh, installed the uh, shaft on the little rotating disc here and here's the actual uh, wiper for it right here and what I did let's see if I can get in close is after I stuffed it through the hole, I just went ahead and bent it over. And how I did that was I grabbed me a block and I stuck it in something to support it and put something hard under it. Actually, I did this on the lathe table. And then I took a, took a ball bearing and I put it on top of it. And then I just hit it, tapped it very gently. Uh, with my small ball between the hammer. It looks bigger in the video. Trust me. It's, it's pretty small <laughs> It's not a huge one and Once I did that then I went ahead and removed the ball bearing and then I used uh, this little screw right here And I used the two flat sides Put it on it like that and then just finished tapping it down and what I found is that it is definitely really snug on there pretty good 
Now I didn't hit it too hard because I didn't want to crush or split this. Uh, I don't even know what it's really made out of. Some kind of paper and wood and, and glue and kind of pressed together. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, I didn't want to break it. So I went ahead and just made sure and snugged it up real good. So, And it doesn't turn now. It does not turn at all. And so that's a good thing. So uh, let's see if I can get a, a close-up of the grooves here. There we go. Maybe, maybe get this out of here. There, there's the grooves. That one in the back is actually deeper than it looks uh, on the video. Trust me. Let's see if I can get up close here. Get some better light on it. But uh, it's actually flat. I think it's because of the things that are around it that are making it look like it's not as deep as it is. But it doesn't really matter. It's 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 fine. And uh, this is how it goes. Uh, this part goes. First of all, you put the snap ring on there, and that groove way way in the back. Then you put the little washer on there. Then you put the uh, the packing on there. And then you shove it through this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. And then after you get this through that, then you can go ahead and put this washer, that lock, lock uh, ring on there, lock washer or whatever. Slide it down there. And what that does is between those two, it keeps the, it's, keeps it centered in here so that it can't come out, can't go forward, and it can't go back. And it makes sure and puts a lot of tension on these wipers right here so that they actually... Uh, in contact with a resistive compound on that disc there then you can go ahead and mount it in uh, well in this case it would be in the hole right here for the PG 502 and put your nuts on it and then you can go ahead and put your your outer uh, uh, knob on and, or, and then your uh, your end knob or inner knob I guess because it kind of goes on the inside of this one here uh, and then it would it would look like this one over here and then you would be able to uh, make adjustments I don't know if I can focus there you go it would be like this one over here and then you could make adjustments so that's kind of neat anyways I just wanted to show you how I repaired that so again if you uh, guys have a lathe or something let me see if I can't tilt it this way a little bit and get some better lighting on it for you if you have a lathe uh, there's your dimensions right there for the building that little piece and now you know how to build it and or at least you have the dimensions for it and you know how to install it when you go to cut these grooves uh, take that number 47 drill bit and put it in the shaft for a little extra support because these you know this is pretty thin in here but uh, you want to make sure and support that inner piece right there uh, when I actually cut uh, some of these I actually ran the tailstock all the way up here put that drill bit in it and I had that drill bit sitting in here part of the way well actually quite a bit of the way and then I, I went ahead and drilled it and what that did is it made sure that this whole piece was supported fairly well this was in the jaws and this had a piece out here and then I cut it and that way it, it wouldn't wobble like this uh, in the lathe when I was actually cutting it <laughs> so well that's a little bit of tip for you machinists there that might want to do it for you average guys well you might just have to go out and buy one of these and if you can't find one you know how to take them apart as long as this piece is good you could probably take the center piece out of another one that's a that's a double uh, ganged up resistor uh, potentiometer double potentiometer and just change this piece out right here because the wiper and the disc and the shaft should be the same the only difference would be this and the other wiper then. So, uh, how this is mounted to this, I didn't like it. I think I mentioned it once before. Is It looks like they just used some JB Weld to hold it together. I'm not sure exactly how they did it. But that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that and put it back together. Because the knob and everything will hold it on. Alright, I've got that first uh, snap ring on there on the bottom down there I'm gonna go ahead and put the washer on uh, let's see if I can find it oh here it is and let me get that on there okay there it goes come on get all the way down he likes to get hung up where the uh, o-ring goes 
So you can see I've got that on there now. So let's get this O-ring on there. Alright, so I've got the O-ring on here. Let's go ahead and push it down. You have to push it past that first snap ring. And let's see, boom. Okay, it's in. Now what we have to do is we have to install this piece uh, through the wafer right here. And then install this, this snap ring uh, right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, uh, before I put that little ring on there, uh, the missus walked over and uh, she kind of dropped this off over here for me. A little bit of strawberry shortcake and some ice cream and some goodies there. So I might have to take a quick pause and then get back to this. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <sighs> oh boy. Hold on guys, almost done, all right? I'm getting there. Mm. Oh man, only a couple bites left. Yeah, I have to get some more then. Mm. <clears throat> mm. It's good stuff. Well, almost done. Ah, finally, I'm done. I guess I can get back to work. All right, I'm cheating. I did go rinse out the bowl. Figured it's the least I could do for my honey making me such a nice little snack while I was working over here. So, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and get this back into here and get that snap ring on there. All right, when you go to do this, you're gonna have to press on it like this at the same time, and then uh, and then put that snap ring in there. No, no real easy feat to do. Trust me, I've already done it at least once. Um, and these snap rings. Um, be real careful with them because they will fly across the room and you might not find them. I was lucky I launched this the first time when I was at work during break and it hit the wall on the back of the solder bench and then rolled behind the cabinet about a foot back behind the cabinet to the right. So I had to get a magnet to get it back. <laughs> I was like, ah! So uh, anyways, let me get this on here and then uh, I'll show you what to do next. Alright, if you're real good at balancing you can put that on there and then use a pair of forceps to go over the top or the side and uh, squish it on. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. There you go, guys. I just uh, kind of held it on here with my finger like this and then grabbed my forceps right there and uh, came over the top. Let me set it down. Maybe I can show you how I did it. So I held it on with my finger and I brought it over the top and then just smooshed it down like that snapped in so glad I don't have to be chasing this across the room so I can finish this video for you guys <laughs> alright the next thing we need to do is go ahead and reassemble this particular item and uh, put it in here this is gonna go uh, notice that this one is opposite of wires so this one will be the same it'll be this way so let's get that on there all right, when you go to uh, assemble it, there actually is like a little area. You can see the little recessed area there next to my uh, thumbnail right in here. And it goes around to the other side. And then there's, uh, whoops, there's one on, uh, let's see, there. And then I believe there's one on this side too. Can't quite focus into it. Well, maybe not. Okay. So anyways, uh, you just push that in there and then you bend the tabs over. So I'm going to put that in there and bend those tabs over and I'll show it to you. Oh, and one of the tabs uh, stays up. I'll have to look at the picture uh, before I took it apart and <laughs> to remember which tab stays up and the other one goes down. That's, uh, that's your little uh, guide pin tab, I guess, to help you make sure it stays in the hole and doesn't turn when you turn the knob. So let's get this bent over. All right, there it is. It was the tab on the left. I have a picture of it. Uh, I try to take pictures before I take things apart, and there's the back, the back part, and uh, works pretty good. It turns around just fine. But, uh, most of the time when I do this, and this isn't my first rodeo on this, uh, I've been able to fix them uh, fairly successfully. Uh, this is the first time I've ever had to build a shaft, though. Usually I just cannibalize one out of another unit, but I didn't have one to do that with, so I went ahead and built the shaft. So uh, now I have to put some JB Weld on here 
And I'll probably rough this up a little bit with some uh, sandpaper and this side up a little bit and then I'll glue them together. So uh, let me go do that. I'll have to stop the video for that. Alright, I'm back. I got a little bit of JB Well. This is more than, way more than I need. So you just mix it up real good. And uh, make sure before you uh, do your service you either scratch them up a little bit and then uh, use a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol clean any oil and stuff off of that that you know from you handling it you want the glue to stick so let me get this mixed up and get it together and then just tape it up when you're done and let it sit for 24 hours alright put a thin layer around it doesn't have to be too liberal you don't want it getting inside and some will ooze on the uh, inside a little bit but it's not going to go like drip in there and it cause problems so once you get that done and uh, squish them together and tape it so I'll show that to you here in a second. All right, I got it all taped up. Uh, when you put it together, just rotate the two pots together if there's any uh, JB Weld left on it, and it will find its old spot where it was at, and then just squish them together, put some tape on it. You can even maybe put this in a small vise or something, but the only problem with doing that is I would be afraid that this side would get squished and this side would want to open, and then you're shafts wouldn't be lined up very well so I think the tape in this case is the best method and for cleaning this up uh, alcohol dissolves uh, epoxy and basically JB Weld is epoxy with metal flakes in it so you just wipe it all up put it on your rag and you can clean this uh, this lid back up and put it back where it is if it's thick enough you can actually take the rig the the lid and twist both sides in the opposite direction and it'll peel it and then you can hit it with some alcohol and clean it up so until I uh, until this dries and I go to reinstall it back in the PG 502 uh, I think I'm gonna call it a night here and we'll finish this up tomorrow night so chit chat with you later until then Bye. all right guys I got it all back together here it's uh, nice and sturdy and uh, what, what you have to do next is go ahead and Pick out your three pins that uh, go to your pot, put your knob on it, it makes it easier to turn, and then use your multimeter and test it. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, the left three wires are the wires that uh, are for the pot. And there's the pot, it goes all the way to one side, and that's it. And then as I go through the transition, it's really smooth now, no dead spots or anything. So let me... Uh, go do that I'm so fortunately I don't have three hands so I'll have to show it to you another way all right I got an assistant yay okay go ahead and turn that pot there and as you can see it's it's fairly smooth no dead spots no opens nothing and it goes down to zero and turn it back the other way and the same thing too so this pot on one leg is good so let's get the other leg hold on okay so now we're on the other leg down here by the way we did the outside pin now we're doing the two inside pins all right go ahead and as you can see it starts off at zero and it should go up to around 8.3 K it's supposed to be a 10 K pot but it's not <laughs> all right go ahead go back the other way so no dead spots so that's a good pot. So all I have to do now is uh, go ahead and install it into my PG-502. All right, here it is all together. Snap ring and all on the uh, tip there. And here's the, uh, the knobs for it. And here's the uh, flat washer and uh, the mounting nut. So there you go. Now I did actually make a mistake on this, and that is uh, this was correct here, but this pot was supposed to have the wires up. Uh, they weren't supposed to be together, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. Uh, you can, uh, since the shafts aren't keyed on top, you can put the knobs any way you want. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, God bless you all, and Keith on you out. Bye.